need haste After that boy, I need grace I need bones, that's awake I need loss with no break I am chosen, I am great After that boy, I need space But I need space Step over here for me, Anthony. I want you to look at this sign while we read it. We do Deuteronomy 28, 15, then we're going to go straight to 68. Bring it up. Deuteronomy chapter 28. So if you're a Christian, we was all raised as Christians. You're not the only one. But you're familiar with the Bible. You got one at home? Little one. King James? Okay, good, good. That's the most important part right there. So in that little one, I want you to find Deuteronomy chapter 28. And this is what we're going to read. Read this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, meaning the future prophecy. So this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. You, you heard that story of Moses before, right? And how he delivered the children of Israel out of where? Where were they at? They got the pyramids there, right? What's that place called? Egypt. So the Israelites were in Egypt. You know Moses was a black man? You assume that or you know that? Like somebody ever showed you that in the scriptures? Exodus 4. All right, we're going to show you real quick. We want to connect the dots in the scriptures to show that it's your people that was in this book the entire That's time. Right. right. From beginning to the end. Matter of fact, go all the way back to the first minute. Genesis 2 and 7. Then we're going to show them Moses. And then we're going to show them what happened to the, the, the tribe of Judah and all the other 12 tribes. Right. Read. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. Who was the first man? Man. Now, like, in the Bible, what was his name? That he was formed in the Garden of Eden. What was his name? Start with an A. Adam. All right. What do he look like? All right. We're going to show you why. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Read it again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What color is the ground, Anthony? No, no, not, not concrete. Like dirt. What color is dirt? Is it white? What color is it? Yeah. So God formed man from black dirt. So he was a black man, right? Easy. A child can understand that. I teach that to my two-year-old son, my five-year-old daughter. I got another two-month-old daughter. She's going to understand it like that. But somebody that's been, who's had their conscience seared in Christianity for 50, 60 years, it's hard for them to comprehend these basic things in the scriptures. Give me uh, Exodus 4. Show them Christ. Let me show them Moses. This is the book of Exodus chapter 4 and verse 6. And the Lord said unto him. Give me verse 1 so we could uh, see who we're talking about. Verse 1. And Moses answered and said. So we're speaking about Moses right here, all right? But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Lord have not appeared unto thee. And Christ actually said something simple in the New Testament. He said that uh, if you ain't heard Moses, then you won't be able to hear me. And Moses is saying the same thing. He's saying they won't hear me, maybe they'll hear you. The point is, our people just rebellious. They ain't right. trying to listen to Moses, they ain't trying to listen to Christ. Right. You see what I'm saying? Give me verse 6. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. You remember that miracle that happened with Moses? He stuck his hand in his shirt, and it came out. No, nah, no, uh, it, it came. We're going to read it. And he put his hand into his bosom, uh -huh. and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. His hand was leprous as snow. What color is snow? So he stuck his hand in his shirt, and he pulled it out, and his hand was white. If his hand was already white, what would have been so special about it? Right. Oh. There you go. A any color other than white. <laughs> right? But look, go, go back to this. Verse 7. Uh -huh. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again. And plucked it out of his bosom. Uh -huh. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. 
So the scripture said he put his hand in his shirt, pulled it out, it became white. And then he put his hand back in his shirt and pulled it out and it became like the rest of his flesh. He was a black man. Moses was a black man. He fit in with all the other Egyptian people, which were black. Now let's fast forward to Deuteronomy 28. So now Moses was from the tribe of Levi, right here. You see that? If Moses was black and he was from the tribe of Levi, what does that mean for everybody else that's on that side? They black too. So we're reading about black people right here, from the first man to Moses all the way to the last man, black, in this Bible right here. Deuteronomy 28, 15, read. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is Moses speaking to his own people, which are the Israelites that come from these 12 tribes right here. He says, if you don't listen to the words of the Lord thy God, read, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the scripture says curses will come upon the Israelites on this side and they would overtake the Israelites on this side. Somebody else might go through one or two of the curses, but the way you would identify who the real Israelites are is who experienced all of these curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through 68. You follow me? Give me, uh, give me verse 46. Verse 46, is that what I want? 45 and 46. Sure. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses. So we have verse 45. So we skipped a bunch of curses from verse 16 all the way to 44. All those are curses. And we've experienced all of them. This is what the Bible says about these curses. Read. Moreover, all these. Hey, y'all stop and listen to this. Learn your nationality real quick. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee. Hey, yeah, the, the, the Lord trying to speak to you, brother. Come, come stand right here. What we teaching right now is our true nationality according to the Bible. What's your nationality? If I ask you what's your nationality, what would you say? Mix, what's your father? African-American. Your father's an African-American. This your brother right here? Yeah, that's my blood brother right here. So y'all got the same father? Yeah, same father, same mother. All right, this would go to Numbers 1 and 18. There's no such thing as being mixed in your race. I want you to understand that, all right? That's something. What, your, your, your mother's what? White. White? Okay. All right, so, yeah, so we were taught here in America that, you know, if your mother's one thing and your father's something else, then you mixed. But your nationality is what your father is. Right. I'm going to show you that according to the Bible, Numbers 1 and 18. I want you to understand this too. It all goes back to these signs right here and how do you identify which part you're on. So check these signs out. Read. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. Bring it up. What's your name, my brother? McDevin. McDevin? Yeah, Devin. Devin. And your brother's name? Youngin. Youngin? Yeah. All right. But you the oldest? Nah. No. Okay. Middle. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigree. Any of y'all ever had dogs before? Yeah. What's a pedigree? Uh, a pure breed. A pure breed, right? So you're talking about the lineage of that particular dog. Yeah. So right now in the Bible, we're talking about the lineage of a particular group of people. You follow me? That's right. So they declared their lineage, their pedigrees, by what? After their families, uh -huh by the house of their fathers. By the house of their father. So it doesn't matter what your mother is, your nationality is gonna be determined by your father. Right. You understand why, youngin? All right, you understand? I wanna see if you get it. All right, so the, the seed of mankind is what? Sperm. Right. So you plant that seed, it don't matter where you plant it, the same fruit from that same tree is gonna come up. You check me out? So, so uh, you take a, give me a, a fruit. Apple. An apple, right? So if I plant an apple tree in Hampton, what's going to pop up? Yeah. Newport News. <laughs> if I plant that same apple seed in Newport News, what's going to come up? Uh, apple. Uh, apple tree. It, it, it's, it's real simple, right? Yeah. You're like, damn, what, it's, it's, so, so, it's so simple. Why are you asking me that? Right. right. Is, it, is it a mixed tree now? Because it's got planted in Newport News? Yeah. What if I planted it in Africa or China or Japan? Yeah, see you see what I'm saying? So it don't matter where the seed of man was planted. The father still determines that pedigree, that lineage. All right? Now, I'm going to show you something that your father did that was a, against the law according to the Bible. Y'all familiar with the Bible? All right, give me Deuteronomy chapter uh, chapter 7 and verse 3. This is what the scripture said about uh, 
This is what the scriptures say about planting your seed in different places. There's only one place we're supposed to plant our seed. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 7, read. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 3. Verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it. Oh, y'all running? Oh, yeah, put that up real quick, man. Y'all need to get these verses. All right. Now, uh, you familiar with people that got white girlfriends and, you know, dealing outside their race. This is what the law say about that. Read. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it. The land that we went to possess. Remember, we came out of Egypt. Where did we go? Egypt is in Africa. We went a little bit further northeast in Africa to a land called Canaan. We conquered that land. Africans were living there. And then we renamed that place Jerusalem and Israel. All right, so when we went into that place, this is what the Lord said, read. And have cast out many nations before thee, uh -huh. the Hittites uh -huh. and the Gagashites read. and the Amorites uh -huh. and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites seven nations greater and mightier than thou so these are other nations that lived in that land god said when he cast those people out those great nations when he cast them out this is what he instructed read and when the lord thy god shall deliver them before thee and thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them and shalt make no covenant with them the scripture says we shall make no covenant with them marriage is a covenant all right, and it's established by the consummation of, uh, of sex, read. Nor show mercy unto them, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. So we speak in terms of boyfriend and girlfriend because we, our, our minds are sinful. Our minds have, have gone against the ways of the Lord. So when we're supposed to be talking about marriage, we're talking about boyfriend and girlfriend. When we're supposed to be talking about fatherhood, we're talking about being a baby daddy and a baby mama. But the ways of our ancestors were ways of marriage. That's the covenant that we entered into. Read. Nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. Now these were laws that God gave us. He says, don't deal with these other nations. Don't have sex with these other nations. Give me Tobit. I'm going to show you why. Tobit, uh, was it 4 and 12? Yeah. Give me Tobit chapter 4. This, this, is, this is what happens when you deal with other nations. It was, it was more Deuteronomy 7. We'll get that. But it's a point in Tobit that I want you to get to. And we'll just have to go back over it if those brothers come out. <laughs> but the Lord sent uh, a particular spirit over here to draw out a doctrine, so we got to explain that. Tobit 4 and 12. This is the book of Tobit, chapter 4, and verse 12. Uh -huh. Beware of all whoredom, my son. When you think of the word whoredom, what do you think of, Anthony? Like a you're talking about a hoarder, right? No, not hoarder, like whore dumb. Like like a whore. What do you when you think about a whore? What do you think about? Somebody selling their ass for money, right? So the, the scriptures is about to explain whoredom to us, but it's not about to talk about prostitutes. Prostitution is a type of hoarder, but the scripture is gonna show you another type of hoarder too. Read. Beware of all hoarder, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. So the scripture is telling you to take a wife of the seed of your fathers. Meaning what? A woman that comes from one of these 12 tribes right here. Right. And if you if you do the opposite of that, what is the Bible calling it? Whoredom. Whoredom. It's evil. Read. Hey, my brother right here. Y'all come check these signs out real quick. I seen you chilling over there. You was listening. Come check this out. Read. So right now what we're talking about is interracial marriage. You got a wife? You, you don't do? Okay, good, good. And I'm going to show you why you're not supposed to, according to the Bible. The Bible calls that whoredom, and it's hatred towards your own people. Read. That's right. Beware of all whoredom, my son, uh -huh. and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers, and take not a strange woman to wife. A strange woman is a white woman, an Arab woman, a Chinese woman, a Japanese woman, an African woman. Those are strange women, thus saith the Lord. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. 
Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth